Well, here we go. <laughs> 24 well, hours later. Uh, Hedy Howe confirmed last night that Alan Sam Maximan was in talks with a club in Saudi Arabia, Al Hilal. He says he doesn't want to leave and Eddie says that he hasn't fallen out with him. But the reality is to comply with FFP, they need to sell to buy. 80% of Newcastle United is owned by Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. Since early June, PIF now owns 75% of Saudi Arabian sides Al Ittihad. Al Nasir, Al Hilal, and Al Akli. Um, so, should there be any reticence about Newcastle or telling everyone that FFP is a problem for them, um, selling to a club that their company already owns, their parent company already owns, should they be restricted in selling to a club that their parent company already owns, or is this just the benefit of multi club organisations? Well, listen, let's not pretend that they're the only club in the Premier League benefiting from the Saudi Super League this summer. They're not. Chelsea have managed to shift a lot of their cast-offs to Saudi Arabia as well. Looks like Fabinho is going to go for decent money. Alex Tellez, while well, it's a nominal fee compared to some of the money that's being paid, Manchester United have managed to get shot of him. I'm told that they're trying to get rid of Eric Bailly by the same route. So I think what Saudi Arabia have done this summer is come to the rescue of a lot of big Premier League clubs who maybe have been mismanaged. Actually, not in the case of Newcastle, because I think they're trying to balance the books accordingly. And uh, we've made that clear on this station probably since the takeover happened. That actually, they're not going to spend hundreds of million p- of pounds on players. They might get there eventually, but not at this moment in time. It's Al Akli, uh, brilliant pronunciation from you, uh, that are in talks with Sam Maximan. I think Newcastle are looking for a fee of around about £30 million. Pounds, and the knock-on effect will be that they'll then be able to complete the purchase of Harvey Barnes at Leicester. So clearly, despite what Eddie Howe is saying publicly, this deal suits all parties. I'm not convinced that Sam Maximan was going to be a big part of his plans for this season. And he's probably the only player, really, that they could sell without weakening the squad too dramatically and get a decent transfer fee that they can invest elsewhere. Questions will be asked because the connection is so clear for all to see. This is one piffback club buying from another. <laughs> I still think it would be more controversial if we got to a scenario where Piff were buying players and then loaning them to Newcastle. I think that would invite a lot more scrutiny and that's what we were talking about yesterday. Oh, following last night's 2-1 pre-season victory over uh, Rangers, Eddie Howe spoke to the media about Alan Sam Max and Mann's potential move to the Saudi Arabian club Al Ahly and was asked whether or not the club have had uh, their hands forced to sell him. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say forced upon us, but I think financial fair play forces that to a degree. You know, we could make a stance to not sell Maxi, but then we'd be in a position where we wouldn't have been able to recruit Sandro or any other player, so our hands would have been tied. So, you know, we knew this summer that the likelihood is we'd have to sell a player to trade, um, and that is what looked like looks like it will happen. But as I say, until it's done, we don't know. Does Alan want a go, do you think? I think it's difficult for me to comment on what Alan wants. Um, all I know, we've had conversations together, and... You know, I respect him immensely. I hope he feels the same about me and the football club. Well, I know he feels the same about the football club. So there's been no issue between us. Um, we've had a really healthy relationship from day one. Um, but sometimes these things have to happen for the club to, to grow and for Alan to experience something different. Um, so that's Eddie Howe talking about Alan and Maximam. Chelsea's dealings came under scrutiny too, didn't they, earlier in the transfer window with Jamie Carragher calling for an immediate pause to all sales to Saudi Arabia when it became clear that the PIF fund had an interest in Clear Lake Capital. Do the Premier League need to get in front of this before we find ourselves in a situation where we're, we're trying to be wise after the event? It's too late, isn't it? You know, they've already enabled the takeover at Chelsea to go through. Did they do enough scrutiny to see where the money from Clear Lake was coming from? And despite a lot of, uh, you know, public posturing, if you like, they allowed Saudi Arabia to invest in Newcastle as well. So I think it would be after the horses bolted if the Premier League were to were to try and do anything now. What One can of the they reasons do really that see? they allowed the, uh, the, the takeover of Newcastle to go through is because they had a signed document suggesting that they weren't owned by the government of Saudi Arabia, whereas in the United States of America, there, there was a sworn document which suggested that the PIF fund was wholly owned by the government of the Saudi um, regime. It's also been claimed that PIF, with their investment in uh, Clear Lake Capital, is a private equity firm. They don't really know what is going on with Chelsea. It's just an investment that they've got. But the Premier League is said to be entirely satisfied and that there's no conflict of interest. Um, Saudi Arabian side so far have been sort of looking to purchase players that are maybe towards the end of their 
career, some of them, but there have been the odd one or two in their peak years, Ruben Neves being one of them. Alan Sam Maximan is is 26 years of age and at times he's been one of Newcastle's saviours. With the club looking to compete on multiple fronts next season, does it weaken the squad if they were to sell him? Shouldn't they just be adding players rather than having to trade? Yeah, but this is the problem. Everybody assumed that they would be spending mega money because of their backing from Saudi Arabia. But in, in fairness to them, they've been pretty steadfast. They don't want to rock the boat when it comes to FFP. I know Eddie himself doesn't want to get into a situation where some players in the dressing room are earning dramatically more than others. So I, I, I never thought they would go down the, the, the Hollywood route, if you like. They've been linked with... Neymar, there's even been talk of Cristiano Ronaldo, which was fanciful in the extreme. But in terms of the squad, I think you're right. I think Sam Maximan probably uh, would have a role to play coming off the bench. Would he be happy with that? I think he was a bit frustrated with his, with his lack of minutes last season. They've got Anthony Gordon, who they signed as a, a wide player. Looks like Harvey Barnes will be coming in. I would suggest he's an upgrade on Sam Maximan. But it will be interesting to see how Eddie Howe balances trying to achieve what they did last year in terms of finishing the top four, reaching a cup final for the first time in a long time with competing in the Champions League. That's why. And listen, I've got no axe to grind with Newcastle. You know what I think about Eddie Howe and, and Jason Tindall. Dan Byrne, who I've interviewed for a book I'm writing about Newcastle recently as well. I think in some ways it's a good story. Obviously, there will be people who say, well, it's clouded because of the Saudi Arabian interest. But I just don't see Newcastle hitting the heights next season that they did last. I think it's going to be really difficult.